Hello guys, welcome to the next episode of this Mercedes Sprinter van conversion. If you have seen our last video, you'll now know that in a couple of months time, we're actually going to be living in our van full time. And we're going to be going on a year long tour around Europe. So the one thing that we wanted to consider, as we're going to be spending so much time in the van, is we wanted to re-evaluate the living space. I think if we was using the van as a weekend van, our original arrangement with an L-shaped seating area here would have sufficed. But I think as we're going to be living in it permanently, we just wanted a bit more space to move around. We're going to be in it full time, so I think the extra space is going to be really valuable. A few weeks ago we went to Camp Quirky and we hired one of their vans, a van called Angel. I did a van tour video. I'll put a link up here and a link in the description if you want to have a look at that van. But the key thing that everybody pointed out with that van was it had a double swivel seat in the front. It's very unusual. Most people take these original double seats out, throw them away and then put a single captain's seat in. Obviously you lose the additional passenger seat. Obviously it opens up the cab so you can walk through from the front to the back without coming outside the van so it does have its advantages but we thought this was a fantastic idea and it would really gain us a lot of space and having stayed in that van for the weekend at Camp Quirky it really sort of solidified the fact that we need to do the same in our vehicle. So what we've done is we've removed this L-shaped seat that's going to be here and we're going to have a single bench seat underneath the window at the back here so we're still going to have seating here and a demountable table this is still going to be our living area but we're going to put a double swivel in the front here so we're not going to have a bulkhead here and then we're going to be able to turn these seats around to face the back of the van and that's going to gain us about another four feet of living space which is going to be huge you know it's really going to open up this whole area so here's the parcel that came in the post a couple of days ago and in here is the double swivel mechanism it's a very clever simple design it's basically a couple of sheets of five mil steel plate fixed together with these wheel knobs and then what that allows you to do is once you've taken those out that disengages the two plates and it allows them to spin round on each other and then what you've got is alternative mounting positions for the existing mounting brackets and nuts and bolts for the existing seat. So you don't have to adapt any of the existing fixing positions. It literally unbolts and then rebolts to this top plate. So let's have a look at how the front seats are actually fitted in the van. The way the front seats are currently fitted, you've got a bolt which secures the back of the seat support onto the base here and then if we lift the front seats out you can see there's also a bolt at the front here which secures this front member there's also a bolt at the back here which secures this and then there's a corresponding nut at the back here which obviously secures this part of the bracket so there would appear to be two bolts to undo at the back these two bolts to undo in the centre here and then we should be able to lift this whole seat assembly off of its base. One thing to just bear in mind when you're removing the seat is there's a sensor cable right here. This little yellow clip has got a couple of cables in it which are connected to the seat belt system I believe and then what that does is that has some connection with the passenger airbag system. And I've been told by a couple of people that obviously we need to disconnect this to change this seat into a swivel but at no time do you turn the ignition on or start the vehicle at all when this is disconnected because when this is disconnected if you turn the vehicle on you'll get an alarm that will appear on the dashboard and then that needs to be reset by a main dealer or a garage. I mean for belt and braces you could actually disconnect the battery if you're working on anything electrical and then you've got no problems at all. Make sure it's reconnected before you turn anything back on. These are a torque style screw, they look like a little star pattern or a little flower pattern. My torque heads only go up to T40 which is slightly too small for these 
but what I have found is the actual hex driver on your drill bit actually fits these perfectly so I'm just going to use that it's like an allen key you could use as well I suppose and they come out quite easy we'll remove this bolt here the nuts are captive nuts they appear to be just tack welded onto this metal box so they'll remain and then we'll keep hold of these bolts and they'll get put back into the new seat bracket right first thing we'll do everything's switched off there's no ignition on i'll just disconnect this little sensor what we'll probably have to do is cut this cable tie and then once we've got this through the swivel seat we can then put a tie back in there and then I just need to undo these two bolts keep hold of these bolts they'll go back in okay that's the four bolts removed that hold the seat down so we should be able to now just lift the whole assembly out This is the new swivel seat base. First thing we'll do to get this installed is we'll remove these six hand knobs. That'll separate the two plates and that'll just make it lighter to move around. We can secure the bottom plate to the existing seat base and then we can put this top plate back on. Obviously being six mil steel plate, the assembly is pretty heavy but then it needs to be strong to make the seats secure. And then lastly, we just need to remove this center pivot bolt. That separates the two halves of the plate. And then what we'll do now is we'll mount this bottom section to the existing seat base. They've supplied us with some additional bolts because obviously we need the existing bolts to go back into the seat. Right, let's just get this bottom plate offered up into position. little storm here and what I can do is flip this back just so we've got access to this what we are going to have to take off is these little clips for this electrical cable here because at the moment that's holding that a little bit proud of this surface there's a slight flaw in the design for this swivel chair and that's in this central swivel nut I'm pretty sure this is a safety feature so that when you've got all the six holding down bolts removed the chair doesn't just fall over onto your feet so this central swivel bolt that it can turn on this rides up and down in the slots and this just stops it becoming you know unsafe and just falling off however there's no provision to get the cable the sensor cable for the seat belts up through the middle of the new seat base without it getting snagged or without it getting pinched or possibly even worse cut. So what I've done on a drill press here, I've taken a tungsten carbide drill bit and I've drilled a hole right through the middle of this swivel nut. And then what that'll allow me to do, I'll put some heat shrink on that cable just to give it a little bit of extra protection and I'll pass that cable up through this swivel nut. And that'll allow the seat to spin completely freely without snagging that cable at all. You could spin that seat through 360 degrees and that's not gonna cause any damage to that cable at all. This nut is actually gonna provide loads of protection. Stop it getting chafed or cut. And what we've had to do here is I've had to remove this little yellow plug that was on the end of this sensor cable. These are quite fiddly to get out. What you need to do is you need to open up this little flap here very carefully not to break it and then there are two little tabs on these here and here 
that you need to press down with a little screwdriver just to tease these out but do it very carefully because you could actually just pull the wires out and leave these in the socket and then what we're going to do is going to put some heat shrink over this cable which will give it a load of protection I've already filed all any burrs or and I've um, countersink the end of that made sure that's really smooth in there but then once this heat shrink is on I'll shrink that on there pass the cables through this swivel bolt and then reattach this little plug and then no matter what we do when we swivel the chair there's no way this cable is going to get damaged this is the slot that this bolt's going to slide along in and obviously this is the bolt that we've drilled out so that we can get that sensor cable through so now it's just a case of popping that through the two plates a couple of washers and a nylock nut that we're just going to do up I'm not going to nip that up because that needs to be able to slide along So we'll just tighten this up I'm not going to do it tight I'm going to leave it loose just so it can freely slide along this slot that's a little bit too tight so I'll just loosen that off a little bit that's it that's just enough to allow it to just slide freely along there so you can swivel it around it's a bit of a safety feature it stops this top plate just falling off on the floor when you've undone the holding down bolts. Pull it through that. There we go. So there's the sensor cable. Obviously the heat shrink will give it some protection. It's through the middle of that pivot bolt so that when the plates are separated And that can freely slide around now and obviously spin about and there's no way that cable is going to get snagged that's the top plate back on it just remains now to fix the seat back onto these new mounting positions these are the six holding down bolts so when you're driving all the six of these secure the top plate to the plate underneath and that stops it sliding around So you can see under here we've reconnected the sensor cable and you can see where that bit of heat shrinked cable goes through that swivel nut in the middle. So obviously the shaft of that drilled out bolt is going to really protect that cable. There's no way at all that's ever going to get crushed. Here was the original mounting location for the seat belt for the passenger. This has now been relocated down to this position here. There's a special bracket which is welded or is actually part of that bottom plate so now this is secured to the bottom plate which doesn't move and that allows the seat to then swivel around without being attached to the seat belt first thing i want to show you is how easily this tips back to access the cubby holes underneath we lift the seat out we undo the four outside holding down bolts leave the two central ones connected that keeps the two plates stuck together and with these hinges on the back here that will allow us just to tip the seat backwards tip the seat back on those rear hinges and then we can access this cupboard underneath so we could use that for some extra storage or you could put your leisure batteries in there or anything like that And then we simply take out the last two bolts. And we can simply turn the whole chair around. And it's 
slides really easily. I mean, literally just a few finger touches. Just place a couple of the hold down bolts back in just to secure it so it doesn't move around. There you go. I think you can see that really has opened up this end of the van now. I think that's probably given us about another three or four feet of space in this living area. So this is going to be really fantastic when we come to do our tour. I'll put the link in the description below for the website where I purchased this swivel seat. It is a made to order item so please be prepared for a little bit of a wait. We waited just over a month for ours to be laser cut welded and then powder coated but now we've got it i'm really pleased that we brought it we're both absolutely thrilled with how easy this works hope you've enjoyed this video please make sure that you subscribe we've got plenty more videos coming very soon on the completion of the rest of this sprinter van conversion thanks very much for watching cheers